Well, what's going on, everybody? Welcome in to the pod at the Palace. Curtis Wilkerson, Scotty Bordelon with you as always from Natty State Sports Studios in downtown Fayetteville. Obviously, we have a special guest in here today. There has been really one man who's held the weight of the program on his shoulders here for the uh, <laughs> for the recent couple weeks. Uh, and I'm sure it's probably been a, a roller coaster of emotions. We're here with Razorback forward Lawson Blake, who is kind enough to join us today. Thanks for coming in, man. How's it going? Good. Thank you all for having me. Happy to be in here. Yeah, good, man. Well, we, we appreciate you coming in. Uh, but just I, listen, we got to start before this whole Razorback deal, man. I, I want to throw mm -hmm. it back just a little bit. Before I started covering the beat here at Arkansas, um, I was working as a scout with Prep Hoops. So right. I saw I saw a lot of you, man, whether it was with uh, with AAO out on the circuit. Yeah, the Prep Hoops circuit. Oh, dude, yeah. yeah I, I probably wrote a dozen stories about you. <laughs> um, I remember the combine that they did there and seeing you out there. Mm -hmm. um, Springfield, you guys were at that Arvest tournament up there. Uh, saw you in Poplar Bluff. Uh, so it, it's... It, it, I've seen you a lot, and so it's been cool to kind of see you to grow and develop. And then obviously, when I got down here and saw that you were coming to Arkansas as a walk-on, I was like, ah, yeah, I know, we, I know who that guy way. is. How we about that? It together a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about that, man? How about that? Uh, I, I wanted to ask you though, because uh, I think back to seeing you at Fayetteville, mm -hmm. and I'd go there to, to watch games, cover you a little bit, and I'd see Ronnie Brewer on the on the bench. And so you guys go way back. Like, what, what can you tell us about just your relationship with Brew and, and maybe how that's developed over the years? Yeah, I mean, Ronnie Brew, that's, that's as good as it gets. He's such a good guy to have in the locker room, have around the team. All the guys love him. The staff loves him. He's been a, uh, really kind of always on the player level, so he's always been kind of a good bridge between the, the players and the rest of the staff. He's super relatable. And I think for a lot of guys, especially at Arkansas, you know, everyone wants to play in the league, of course, and he's someone that did it. So... Everyone knows they can go to Ronnie, talk about their stuff, and it's it's not someone that did it 30, 40 years ago either. He was he was in the league not that long ago, so he he really gets it. He gets us. He's great to have. How much does he mix it up with you guys? I mean, was he was he was he giving you buckets in the high school days or at Arkansas? Does he still get after it? No, not not much. He's uh he's a bit more non-contact now. He, he doesn't he doesn't like to <laughs> like too. to get too physical, <laughs> but you know he'll, he'll throw up a couple shots every once in a while. He's still got a little bit for sure. Okay, but. all right, okay. <laughs> Do you? How much have you been in contact with Brew? The, you know, the last couple of weeks, and how would you say that relationship with him has has evolved over the years? We we see each other just you know around the facility. I still uh, talk to him every once in a while when I see him. We've we've been through it together now, and uh, especially being two Fayetteville natives, we kind of always had right. that connection. But me and him have just gotten closer each year. It feels like for sure. Um, what what has made you not want to transfer to? Like, how many guys have transferred out of the program since the season ended? Is it like seven or eight? Yeah, I mean, all of at them. At least. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's been wild. What, Even what, Kate, you know. Right. So. Yeah. What? Yeah. What's made you want to hang around here? I love the Razorbacks. The bleed, bleed red. Uh, Fayetteville kid. It's it's been my dream always. So I I really can't imagine being anywhere else. You know, had smaller schools. Think it was you know maybe I'd try to get somewhere else, get to play a little more, take on a different role. But I knew this is what I'd be a part of. And especially now that we have Calipari coming in, I mean, yeah. that's super exciting. That's definitely something that I, I would really like the opportunity to be a part of. So Curtis mentioned K just a second ago. How did you let him get away? Like, how, how did how did, <laughs> how did did you let him get in the portal, man? Right. It, uh, <laughs> it happened kind of quick. We, he, he hasn't really been sure, you know, what he's trying to do exactly. He he graduated last year, actually. I mean, he'll, he'll, be, he'll be going into his sixth year of college. So, you know, okay. have, he's still trying to figure his – stuff out a little bit trying to figure out what's best for him have you graduated yet are you getting close i have i'm, I'm finishing up my junior year so i'll be okay. a senior next year there you yep. go there you go you did a prep year is that right after Correct. after fayetteville you went to to link right? yeah cool. yeah i graduated yeah. high school in 2020 then uh reclass to 2021 went to link year for a year that's right mm -hmm. uh earlier in the season we had we had Layden blocker in here uh mm -hmm. we were interviewing him and, and we were asking him all kinds of questions and we were talking about Body by Rich, the the Dave yeah. Rich experience, and we asked him who the strongest guy on the team was, and right away he was like, "Oh, Lawson Blake." Like hands, <laughs> hands down. down. Can you <laughs> confirm that you are the strongest guy on the team? Uh, I mean, right now. Well, well I, I, <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> no, uh, I guess so. I mean, it's not it's not a uh, apples to apples because you know a lot of guys they're you know they can't get sore on game day. Their their lift sure. schedule is a little different, but uh, 
yeah, whenever whenever we do some of the strength tests and and stuff, I'm I'm usually up there. So, I like that. Yeah. I would uh, I would use that for clout a hundred percent if I was in, <laughs> yeah, if I was to. in your spot. No doubt you about got it. To. You take yourself out of that equation. Who is the strongest guy on last year's team? Is it Kai and maybe some of the other forwards? Yeah, Kai. Kai was really strong, pound for pound. L. Ellis, really, yeah, okay. very okay. very good athlete. Devo as well, pound for pound, really good numbers. Uh, but yeah, Kai, Kai probably like raw strength. He, he'd be up there for sure. Um, I wanted to ask you about you. You've played with a lot of guys in your time at Arkansas. Is there a if you had to name one, do you have a, a favorite teammate that that you've had, and 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 why? No yeah. shade to anybody else. Yeah, right. No, no shade to anyone else. Of yeah, course, not it's, throwing it's anybody so under the bus. Just one. I've been uh, fortunate to have a lot of teammates. Uh, Kamani Johnson was was great. That's who I lived with my freshman year. Got okay. got to hang around him a while. He's a super great guy to be around. Uh, Anthony Black was a really good teammate. Jalen Williams a really good teammate. So those yeah. are two guys. My freshman and sophomore years, whenever we'd go on the road, we'd always be in the same hotel room. So I got to spend a lot of time around them but yeah a lot of great teammates and then me and Kate you know the two walk-ons kind of kind of were able to see eye to eye on a lot of things went through a lot of stuff right. together we were kind of the two doing our own thing sometimes so sure. yeah we saw no. you and uh you and Kamani get a nice yeah. little reception at the yeah. the intro thing the other day that was cool man. yeah it was one that of the really biggest cool. pops of the night yeah like, as head, it should have been head coach introductions included exactly how's it feel to uh i mean you've been you've had the weight of the program on your shoulders now how does it feel to have a teammate what do you what do you know about big z what do you remember about big z not not a lot the croatian sensation the croatian sensation <laughs> yeah. uh i actually i think i played it as him in scout team a little bit whenever we'd get ready for kentucky i, so love that, I was yeah. a little familiar yeah. with this game already but uh, obviously very skilled, a lot of size. I'm really excited to see what it brings to the program. So there, you're the only two guys, you know, on, on the team right now. So let's say that's just the way it kind of shakes out. Who's the ball handler in pick and rolls? I mean, is it is it you? Is it him? What do you think? <laughs> I don't. I mean, he's a good player. It's not. It's hard to say what I would actually have over him in any in any <laughs> skill. But uh, I mean, he's 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 a seven footer, so I, I'd probably have to take take the point. Yeah. Uh, Maybe just a six ten guard, Magic Johnson. He'd be a little there. We go. Yeah. Guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, right? that's, that's what I told Curtis earlier today. I was like, "Look, both of these guys are team guys from what right. we know." But I think there's a lot, there's a lot of possibility with Z as a role pop man, and, and Lawson would would definitely find you. Yeah, I um, think it could. I think it could work. Twin Towers, Brothers of Destruction. We'll we'll right. figure it I out. I mean, limited sure. options right now. But. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, your managers won a national title. Yeah, uh, that's pretty cool, man. We've been following that story over here for since it became a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a neat deal. It's pretty awesome. They got to go to Phoenix and do that. Um, Do you ever get to sneak in on any of those games or is that just was it shut down? I didn't. I uh, I thought about it a couple of times. I know there were some teams that had their walk ons. It was actually Kentucky that had like the, yeah. the walk on gate. I don't know if you remember. <laughs> they, they got called out. Uh, no, I never got in on any games, but. It was it was fun to support them, kind of follow that path to the to their national championship. Folks, I want to take a minute to tell you about our friends at Signature Bank. Signature Bank is a privately held boutique bank that's redefining the banking experience in our region. They blend the warmth and familiarity of a community bank with the sophistication of a commercial bank and the expertise of private banking to deliver unmatched levels of service. If you're looking for reasons to bank with Signature, they're personally invested. They're business-minded, community-focused, right-sized, and forward-thinking. Make sure you get out and check out one of their Arkansas locations or visit www.signature.bank to learn more. How often were those guys, I mean, were they hooping on you guys at practice ever? I mean, I, I know, I don't remember if it was GA's managers. I, I know those guys mixed it up with you a little bit in practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we had GAs that were, you know, definitely good basketball players. They played yeah. college basketball at, a, at different levels. And a lot of days, you know, we're not going – live player on player every day so there's a, a lot of times a lot of drills then scout team too where it's going against the GAs a couple of the managers but they can hoop for sure right I remember I can't remember which NCAA tournament year it was but it was it was at the NCAA tournament it was one of the practices that media got to attend mm -hmm. and uh, so we were getting able to film the first part that we were in I just remember one of the one of the little guards that was one of the managers uh, just went went coast to coast and finished over the top of Connor Vanover, and I was yeah. like, "Oh!" As I, I clipped <laughs> that out. We need people to see that before the NCAA tournament. But those guys can play a little bit. No it's, it's pretty cool deal. Pretty For cool sure. deal. Uh, Lawson, I don't know how much. Are you a big social media guy? I, I yeah, I get on there a little bit. I mean, Snapchat, I don't, Instagram X. <laughs> have you? I don't know how you've. I'm sure you've you've been appreciative of it, but Arkansas mm -hmm. fans have been just singing your praises like the last couple of weeks and making. 
I remember there was one meme that was probably my favorite was the Will Smith who's standing home alone in Uncle Phil's house and it's right. got your face on it. Like, do you? <laughs> what is your reaction to to all that when when you see it? And do you have like a a favorite meme or tweet that somebody sent you? There, I mean, there's a lot of funny stuff. I get, uh, I feel like anything I, I don't see myself, somebody texts it to me. <laughs> I'm uh, sure, yeah. So it's been fun, uh, you know, trying to get too high or too low anything, just to try to make light of the situation. But uh, the Mills, Will Smith one was good. That's the one I had to repost my own story. <laughs> uh, gosh, I don't know if I if I have a favorite, but it's yeah, it's funny seeing all the uh, just the lone guy on the roster type stuff. Oh, I'm sure. Um, I'm, I'm curious if there's. I used to I used to work with a guy who was a a manager on the basketball team. I think it was Mike Anderson's last year and Eric's first year, and he said that w there was one day in practice where he was in on a drill and he got a rebound over Adrio Bailey one day and Eric stopped practice and absolutely laid into um, Adrio for that. I'm wondering if there's like been a day where you've been kind of working one of the guys who was in the rotation and Eric just like totally got onto the guy or not. Yeah. I mean, it, it happens every <laughs> once in a while. Like even the, uh, blind squirrel finds an acorn. I'll, I'll, I'll make a play every once in a uh, you while. You gotta start giving yourself more credit than that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it's it's funny because it's uh it is kind of like that. It's kind of like you almost don't want to make plays because guys get in trouble. Like you know you you, yeah. you get the steal, you get the bucket, and then it's not like great play loss. And it's how do you, how do you let that happen? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, uh, right. It, every every once in a while, yeah. That's cool. When you got your and one against Georgia, um, the I mean the crowd loved it. The bench went absolutely bonkers. They went nuts for you. What did that feel like, man? Because you, I don't think people really understand the grind that, that walk-ons go through, uh, the sacrifices that you guys make to be good teammates and, and the work you put in to help prepare the team, uh, but then to get your moment and to go out there and get that bucket and just see all the dudes that you've been working with just go go crazy in support. What was that like for you? It was fun. It was a lot of hard work finally coming to fruition. I mean, that was that has been kind of the the apex yeah. so far for uh, me, me personally in my career and like you said, not only the the work, but before then, like growing up, going to games in Bud Walton. Like I don't, I don't know if I've missed a home game in the last ten years. So to be on the floor, be the one making the play, was super, super special to me. Yeah, love that. That was a that was a great moment. One one of the things I loved about last year's team is it, it felt like every time there was one of those big moments, and uh, they would pan over to the bench reactions. Uh, Jordan Walsh, dude, he had he mm -hmm. had the best yeah. reactions on the bench. He was hilarious. How was he as a teammate? He he was he was a lot of fun to be yeah. around. You know, very charismatic. He was he was into it as much as anybody. Knew how to hype <laughs> people up. Uh, yeah, he's a he's a fun guy. Pat you on the back, make you feel good. He was a really really great teammate. Sure. I'm um, I'm wondering what the greatest sacrifice is that a walk on has to make. You know, during the course of a season, even in the off season too. Um, that that maybe fans don't quite understand. Like, what are some of the sacrifices that that you have to make? A uh, scout team is a big part of it. I, I love scout teams, so I don't see it as much as, of a sacrifice. But yeah. uh, we're getting to practice a lot earlier than everyone else. You know, learning maybe ten plays from from the opposing team. Mm -hmm. Go over every team. That's you're learning a couple extra hundred plays over the course of a season. It's yeah, that's it's, a great point. I didn't think about that. Yeah, yeah. it's it's hard to do. It's hard to uh, keep track all, of all of it. But whatever you can do to try to make other guys better is is what you do, and you gotta love it. How did you do acting as uh, Big Z in, on the scout team? Did you get a good review? Uh, I don't. I don't remember specifically. It was. It was fun because um, we had him. We had him as a shooter, you know. And usually the yeah. bigs don't get to be shooters, so I got to, you know, maybe come off a screen, get to pop a little bit more, there you go. play Hoist a, him up a there. little more yeah. outside of my game. So it was. It was fun to play as him for sure. That's sweet. Very cool. Let's. Uh, I want to talk to you about this off season because, like, like we said at the top, this has probably been just an absolute roller coaster for you um i mean there were there, there were job search rumors of, about Mus. i mean it was going back into the season but once the off season hit and things really started to ramp up there and you know like guys are hitting the the portal left and right and it looks like your coach might be leaving like how how did you handle all of that how did you deal with it it was weird you we'd seen it to a certain extent every year so it wasn't mm -hmm. super surprising that guys hit the portal we kind of knew it was going to be another high turnover year but it just kind of kept coming kept coming and uh 
you know, there were there were talks about Mutz for like the week leading up, and then it happened, and then somehow I ended up being the only guy. <laughs> but uh, I just try to you know stay level headed, focus on focus on what's ahead, and trust that it's all going to work out. Especially with you know Cal at the wheel now, that's that's who you want. I if it was anybody else, there might be some concern a little bit at this point. Valid. But, yeah, with with him there, there, there's no worries. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like there are probably very few coaches in the country that could take over, you know, a team without any scholarship players mm-hmm. in, in the middle of April, and and you feel really good about being able to build a a contender. You know, I just right. put a roster together, so I, I'm sure that's I'm sure that's exciting for you. How, have you had have you had many interactions with Coach Cal so far? Not much. We we spoke for a couple minutes right before his presser. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was it was really great to meet him, but after after that he's been you know out. He was I think he was accepting an award in L.A. at one point and just been recruiting, trying to pull everything together. So there hasn't been a lot of one on one time, but you know I look forward to getting to spend more time around him. Hopefully, no so doubt. He said in the press conference when we talked to him, he said I met with the team. There's three guys. They're all in the portal. There is no team. Right? Did you? How did you take that? Because you're like, <laughs> hello, I'm here. Uh, no, I mean, I mean, I I get it. Like. I get I get what he was what he was saying yeah. talking about uh, scholarship guys you know guys sure. that he's like it they're the key pieces and everything so I get out I didn't think much of it I gotcha um, what do you want to do after basketball like what are you, like what what's maybe the the life plan right now I, I mean mm-hmm. that's probably a, a pretty loaded question but what are interests for you outside of basketball once it's over yeah so I'll be a senior next year and I'm a pre med student. So I'm taking the that. taking the MCAT this summer. Going to start applying to medical schools. Hopefully, uh, find out you know acceptances or and, and whatnot by January, and then hopefully go straight into medicine after. Okay. Yeah. Have, Surgical on and off the court, huh? Like, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Have you thought about um, like what kind of of medicine you'd like to get into? Is there anything in specific you're, you're yeah leaning towards? Like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to say open minded, but mm-hmm. right now I'm, I'm thinking orthopedics. Ooh, there I've you been go. Doing uh, doing yeah. surgery, I really like to stay around basketball. So if I could be like a, a team doctor, you right. know, do like uh, knees, shoulders, whatever, I think that'd be super cool. Yeah, very cool. So do you uh, do you get in the training room, hang out with Matt a bunch? Because I mean, the sport, yeah. sports medicine, athletic trainer, you know, kind of deal. So right, I'm I'm probably asking Matt a couple extra questions, yeah. and then most yeah. guys might trying to trying to figure out what's what's really going on, and then you know get to hang out with the our our team doctors that we have. They let me come in and shadow. So I've been oh, nice. In, been around the patients, been in been in the operating rooms with them, get to watch them do some stuff, wow. and it's it's really cool to be around. Yeah, that's neat. I I went back through your your Twitter account. Uh, I saw that you committed. I believe it was December twenty twenty. Um, mm-hmm. What other offers did you have, and then why did you I guess decide to turn down maybe some of those offers to to come here? Yeah, I had you know just like the the D two D three offers. Uh, thought about going to Hendrix. Could have gone Harding uh Wachita Baptist, you know, like yeah. those in state schools. And it was it was interesting to uh you know kind of think about what, what that would be like, but I really had to think about what I wanted my college experience to be. And I I kind of knew the deal coming in as a walk on that I wouldn't be the guy bringing a lot of on court value every night. But just being such a big Razorback fan, I just I would be happy to take any role if any if I could do anything to help the program get better. That would yeah. mean more to me than anything. Do you have a first Razorback memory of any kind, or do you remember like the first game you went to or anything like that growing up? Yeah, when I was, uh, well, actually, I lived in Texas until I was eight, but my grandparents okay. uh, lived in live in Fort Smith, and my grandpa has been a season ticket holder since like the '70s. So I would oh, nice. whenever I would, we'd come see him, he would take me up to the Razorback game. The earliest I remember was seeing a uh, Rodney Clark. <laughs> seeing him wear uh, 15 for the Razorbacks and him being able to really shoot, I thought I thought that was cool. But uh, he's probably my first Razorback I remember, first favorite Razorback. Okay, sweet man. What it, I know this is is difficult to do, but like you've been a part of some some pretty special runs, you know, in your time mm-hmm. at Arkansas. Uh, what's been what's been your favorite? Like if you had to pick some of these March runs, like what which one really stood out to you? You think the most? Beating Gonzaga was was a ton of fun. I enjoyed uh, that. Yeah, right. <laughs> Be- beating Kansas obviously was super cool. Though. Mm-hmm. There's nothing like getting those locker rooms after the celebrations. It's, it's really fun. Yeah. Uh, outside of March, Auburn has to be. That's probably my favorite overall memory. The, oh, the man. court storm beating number one Auburn as a yeah. as an unranked team. 
that, that was super special uh, leading up to Duke, especially seeing like all, all the camp outs and stuff. There was, I don't know if I've seen a game with more hype around it that I've gotten to be a part of. So super fortunate to be a part of all those special moments. For sure. If, well, first of all, did you, did you play other sports? Were you a basketball only guy? Did you, did you do some other things? What was your, uh, what was your I'll, athletic career yeah. consist of? <laughs> uh, really just basketball. I mean, okay. I did like, you know, the football, baseball, whatever, uh, growing up as a kid, but by the time I was in middle school, high school, I was, I was all in on basketball. I gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, you've gotten to travel all over the world, I guess, with this program. Yeah. Um, what are some memories of, of those trips? I guess, was it, what was the foreign tour? Did, Where was that? Italy, Spain, Italy, Italy, Spain. Italy yeah. and Spain. And then you did the Bahamas casually right. Maui. last year. Yeah. Did, Maui, did Maui too. Yeah. Which is, what are some memories that, that jump out about those trips? Those, those are really good times. It was, it was super cool to get to go over to Europe, you know, first time in, in Spain and Italy, I think for all of us. Yeah. But, uh, that was super cool to get to experience that culture. We did some, uh, touristy stuff we got to hang out to got to do all the uh the beaches all the different foods it was it was a lot of fun uh Maui was a super good time also you know just getting to hang out at the hotel they had the yeah. pools and stuff same yeah. with the the Bahamas there was there was stuff to do when, whenever uh the couple of days before the game whenever we had a little bit of downtime for sure yeah me and Curtis were both in the Bahamas too it's got to watch time. all practice I think before that Stanford game mm -hmm. we can agree that there was stuff to do yeah, right. around yeah. basketball for sure yeah no doubt about it for sure um I, I I can never get out of my mind uh watching you guys the first the first game you played I guess it was in Spain I think that's where you guys started out um, and it was just that wild gym with like a million lines on the floor. And then the, <laughs> mm. the officials were, it was like this dude had basketball shorts on and like a white tee tucked in muskets teched up out there. Like it, that was i I'm sure that was an experience, man. Those games had to have been a, a good time. You're playing like, mm. you know, guys, my age, 35 year old men or yeah. whatever. That was, uh, that had to have been pretty cool. Yeah. It was not, it was not the SEC no. that was for sure, but, uh, <laughs> it was, it was a really special experience because it was different in that way. And it was cool to see, uh, we had a lot of freshmen that year. I think that was yeah. the year we, we had yeah. our six freshmen. So going against the grown men, it probably, uh, helped shape us for what was coming in the SEC. We weren't playing high school ball anymore. For sure. For sure. Yeah. You, you've been on rosters too, with a lot of young guys. And then obviously Eric went after the transfer portal guys really hard. So you got some older guys too. Just what has it been like getting to, I guess, know all of your teammates the last several years? Because I mean, they range from like 18 to sometimes guys are like turning 23 or 24 in mm -hmm. season. Yeah, it's, it's cool. It's different because it's no longer the traditional like uh, hierarchy of freshman to senior because everyone's kind of the new guy yeah. for the most part anyway. For sure. So uh, it probably changes the dynamics a little bit, but it's you get to see a lot of different personalities, kind of different levels of maturity and guys grow throughout the year. That's sure. that's been really cool just to especially the guys that stick around a little bit mm -hmm. to see how guys grow and develop, uh, not just on the court, but as men off the court. For sure. What was it like being a, a teammate with Devo the last last few years? I mean, obviously the kid that always, it seemed like he always turned it on in March, mm -hmm. had the couple leaves of absence absences but um just being around him the last few years just what was what would you tell people that that time was like yeah i got to devo was one of the few guys that i got to be around for three years so we got to know each other well uh he's really great to be around you know he can he knows how to make every person in the room feel special uh he he did have you know his stuff going on and everyone is super supportive of him and just as he would have been supportive of any of us yeah so uh it was it was unfortunate to see the type of reactions that he got especially when we knew that he went as hard as anybody in in practice and he put in the work and you know he's a he will always be a arkansas legend arkansas icon so i think he deserves his flowers he deserves all the love absolutely what did uh what impression or, or maybe what impact did, did must have on you i mean obviously uh spent a lot of time around that guy too mm -hmm. a, as your coach and then i wonder if if you have any uh i don't know stories or memories of must that that might stand out to you obviously he was a an intense and an interesting man <laughs> yeah uh i mean I'll, i don't know if anyone's more passionate about the game than than must and i'm i'll always be super thankful for our time together you know he's the one that gave me this opportunity mm -hmm. made made my dream come true of getting me an arkansas razorback so I'll always have nothing but love for him and his family. 
uh, I remember early, I guess my freshman year, that first summer coming in, and uh, we were going through some different defensive drills, and it was kind of a new thing to me to have different defensive schemes, having like the mm. plan A, plan B, plan C. It wasn't like I was I was used to where it was just kind of like one size fits all for sure. everything you see. Yeah. So it was an adjustment. And we, I remember going out in practice and uh, messing up, running right the wrong pick and roll coverage and Mus blew it dead <laughs> quick. And, and he was like, what, what do you want to be? You, you want to be a doctor? I was like, yes, sir. How do you expect me to believe that I can trust you to do my surgery? <laughs> Well, you can't even learn my defense. <laughs> and I was, oh, people, were, people were laughing. You know, I, I was oh, embarrassed man. for sure. But, uh, you know, he, he would remind us, he was like, this isn't Fayetteville High School anymore. Like, you, you want to be a Razorback, you got to run Razorback defense. Sure. Like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> love that. Oh, <laughs> Absolutely love that. Do you remember, do you have any other just stories about him in practice? Just, we've been in on a couple and just know how, like Curtis said, how intense he is. But do, is there any like other practice stories that stand out to you? Yeah, I mean, there were, uh, there were days like y'all, y'all probably saw where we had all, all the bricks and the weight vests and stuff. Mm -hmm. And the days where it, it were, was not as easy, you didn't, uh, feel like going to practice that day, but there was also some fun days, uh, like I remember one time we came in thinking we had practiced. Everyone, you know, got fully dressed out, was warming up the whole time, going going through all of our pre-practice drills. He sits down, starts talking to us, and then starts showing us this pickleball stuff. And we didn't know what was going on. And he said, "No practice. We're going. Everyone's loading up right now. We're going to play pickleball." There we go. So <laughs> whole whole team's excited. You know, no practice. We go out to uh, JJ's live. I think it was, and got to oh, just play. That. Yeah. Have our own team pickleball tournament instead of practice that day. That's awesome. I've um, me and Curtis were talking about this a little bit, maybe toward the the end of this season. Um, we j I think we had we missed a lot of the things about that twenty one twenty two team with Stan and and mm -hmm. JD and Trey Wade and all of those guys. What do you remember about that team and, and what made that team what it what it was? I think it was a lot of guys who embraced their role. I think uh, it was it was cool to have. JD kind of uh, leading us. He was the one taking, you know, a lot of the shots. And then we had like a uh, Audis Tony wasn't wasn't creating his own shots a lot, but was masterful at getting getting the back cut, getting the offensive rebound, getting his buckets that way, getting the high points off low dribbles was really cool to watch. Yeah. Uh, Trey Wade was a six year guy, brought leadership to the team. Uh, ended up being a force for us in March. Just he was so physically strong yeah. and mature that uh. We had a lot of good people. I mean, Jay Will obviously was on that team. I think he set the Arkansas record for defensive rebounds in a season mm -hmm. that year. So that was charges a, taken. Charges oh taken gosh. easily. Yeah, yeah oh. got yeah, got to be the record there. <laughs> um, yeah, we had a lot of really good pieces. I think everyone everyone knew what was expected of them and, and brought it each night. No, you got on the floor for that New Mexico State game, right? Right. The, my my point nine seconds. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you yeah. What do you remember about like? I guess you get you remember being called to like go into the game, right? Yeah. What was just what's going through your mind and it, it does your heart like jump out of your chest? Oh yeah, I don't. We weren't even like blowing them out. I think we were only up by like. Yeah, it was a tight five, game. It was five points. Yeah. And uh, they fouled Audis to take the last two free throws to get us to up seven. Mm -hmm. And there was less than a second left. Uh, and coach <laughs> threw me and Kate in because he knew like there's. Even if it was me and Kay, there was literally no way we we were screwing that up. So it was all good. It was funny, uh, you know, getting to be in a game of that level and it and not being a blowout or anything. But yeah, I remember kind of thinking like, if anyone ever asked me, like, did, oh, did you even play in a single second that game? I'd, I'd be like, not quite. I was in not my, my point nine, pretty <laughs> close, almost. Pretty close. Yeah. Almost. I remember there were some times like late in the first half of games this year where Eric mm -hmm. would throw you and Kate in with like it almost like in a similar situation. Um, did he like it was why did he why do you feel like he did that that's a good question i don't he never uh totally broke it down for us i think he he knew that it, it was a uh a shot to give us a little credit let us sure. let us get a little bit out there say say that we checked in that game so it was probably a uh, a little bit out of out of respect also maybe because he didn't want anyone picking up a dumb foul sure. on point nine he, he also knew that uh me and Kate are going to be the guys that that go hard because another guy that's been playing, you know, the full 20 minutes already, he's ready for halftime, ready to get his breather, but he knows that if he checks on us, we're 
it might only be for a second or two, but we're going to give it our all for the second or two. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I don't think anybody was complaining about it at all, but he never, like, explained. Like, it was never mm-hmm. – I don't think we act, ever actually brought it up, but I wish we had. Yeah, sure. yeah, no kidding. Yeah. No kidding. I, I never asked. I was just happy, <laughs> yeah. happy to be, <laughs> Whatever out, you happy say, be out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm curious. I mean, obviously, Bud Walton Arena, that's that's the best environment in college basketball. But in terms of road games, like, what, what are some of the craziest, you know, atmospheres or maybe just some of your favorite places that you guys have gone and played? Yeah, Auburn. Auburn's a tough one. We only went there once, but it's 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 really tough to win at Auburn. That's a good one. The jungle, uh, yeah. The jungle, right? Alabama has a great student section. Okay. They are uh, very relentless. Every time you walk in, because you know you got to walk right by them, like a lot of these places, yeah. Yeah. right by the yeah. student section, and they're relentless with with the booze, with <laughs> all types of comments. Uh, Love that. Mizzou has a really good one. They have their. There's, I think their leader is called the Antlers. The Antlers, yeah. yeah the oh, Antlers yeah. are good. They, they yeah. do their research. Yeah. Those, those guys come come ready for those every game. Those boys showed up in dresses when y'all went to to Como. This that's year, right. Yeah. I think. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, those yeah, that was strange. Yeah, I mean, you, you gotta you gotta step back and, and laugh a little bit at, at, <laughs> sure. at some of those. Uh, they they know what they're doing, but there's there's a lot of tough environments, tough places to play. It's pretty cool. I'm trying to think about uh, some of the other places that we went to. Um, oh, what about Baylor when you guys went there? Did you did you like doing like the uh, the SEC Big Twelve Challenge or even like the SEC ACC where you just get to play somebody different? You know, a, a yeah. big time program. I I enjoyed I enjoyed going down to that oh, Baylor, yeah. the Baylor sure. game. Yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of of that setup. I'm excited yeah. to see who we get set up with this year. I know. At, Probably at a Baylor. road game this year, right? Yeah, I would, I would imagine. I would think so. Yeah. Uh, at Baylor was a was a fun game. Uh, didn't quite shake out the way we we had hoped. Yeah. But, um, it was cool just to be down battle. there get get to play a Texas game. I have a lot of family in Texas too, mm-hmm. so I got to have a lot of people at that Baylor game. So that was that was a good memory for yeah. sure. Yeah, you mentioned you grew up in um, grew up in Texas. How excited mm-hmm. are you for Texas and OU to hop into the league? That'll be interesting. They'll they'll bring something new to the table. No doubt. I'll be uh, interested. You know, kind of who we play where. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm excited to have, to have those teams, teams that I kind of grew up watching more. Uh, it's it's fun to have them in the SEC. Tough to see T Mark commit to Texas the other day. Did that hurt a little? I, I no, I wouldn't say tough. I was. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had to be happy for him. I think it'll be a good fit for him there. So yeah, for wish sure. Wish him the best for sure. Before Cal gets hired here, what were your memories of him from when he was? at Kentucky do you have any that that jump out to you yeah I actually have a lot uh it's like I mentioned I I grew up in Texas so I wasn't you know an an Arkansas fan at birth but uh my my grandpa was a diehard Kentucky fan raised my dad to be a diehard Kentucky fan so when I was little I was uh I was you know leading Kentucky a little bit more so my my earliest basketball memories are uh seeing Cal and watching those Kentucky teams and and rooting him also I was actually a a Calipari fan before I was an Arkansas fan. How about so, that? So yeah, it's, it's been really full circle moment for me. It's it's cool. I, I think I have pictures from like when I was little, kind of through the years, just getting pictures with Calipari. So <laughs> having the chance to play for him now is insane to me. Have you brought any of that stuff up to him? I haven't. Are you yet. going to? You got to do that. Yeah. If, yeah. yeah if the time's right, yeah. <laughs> it'll. I'm I'm sure it'll come up. Have you sure. thought much about just what it would be like for you guys with Calipari? to play a game in Rupp next year, like his reunion at Rupp Arena. I imagine that would yeah. be nuts. I'm, I'm interested to see how the Kentucky fans respond. I, I know, yeah. I haven't been able to get a great read for, for how, they, how they feel about it, but uh, there's going to be a lot of hype around that game, no doubt. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited to see what happens. Yeah, hopefully they do the home and home again. I, just, I feel yeah. like Arkansas and Kentucky should play each other twice every year. And I know it gets a little more complicated now with uh, with yeah, Texas and OU teams. coming in. Yeah. I have no idea what the schedule will look like, but mm. that needs to be a, a home and home series every yeah, year. Yeah, just blow the schedule up and just go thirty game SEC only schedule. Yeah, why I not? Guess you, you just get one non con game. How about that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That way you make it equitable for everybody. Exactly, exactly. When you're not playing basketball, what do you like to do? What are, What are your interests outside of outside of ball? And I guess school. Uh, yeah, I mean a lot, a lot of schoolwork, a lot of time mm-hmm. in the library. It's it's a it's a tough balance. Uh, I mean, outside of that, I I feel like I have, you know, just the the normal like to hang out with my buddies, you know, mm-hmm. uh, watch movies. It's fun to go to the lake. Uh, yeah, I like spending time outdoors. Get get to uh, whatever whatever free time I have. I you know try to get outside. It's fun. 
uh, getting to do stuff outside of How much free time do bit. you have? It doesn't feel like little. a lot. I was, <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to try to scrap my brain. Like, what, what do I do? What do I do? Yeah, like time, every time outside of school and basketball. Like, I don't really know. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I just like hanging out, hanging out with friends, having a good time too. For sure. So. so, you know, I mean, Coach Cal is new here. Uh, we all know that he he loves Hermans. He's a big Hermans guy. Yeah. Um, but he's also going to have a new staff that's coming in. I, get, I mean, you're the Fayetteville guy. They might be coming to you for advice. and like, oh, where, where should we go eat? Well, where would you tell them to go eat? What's, what, what are your spots that you like to go grub at? I'm a, I'm a big Hugo's guy. Love some Hugo's. That's a, yeah. definitely Fayetteville staple, too. Yes. So I feel like that's, that's like a must-go. We go there must probably go. like once every 10 days. Yeah, it's like right down the right block. The we go there after here, this. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah Hugo's is good. Hugo's is good. Ham and mm-hmm. Trees is another good spot. It's underrated. Yeah, yeah, I feel like people sleep on Ham and Trees. It was like National Grilled Cheese Day last week. I thought about going over there. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I like Ham and Trees. I, mm-hmm. I feel like those are uh, two must-go tos. JJ's is also. A cool oh, yeah. spot, hang out, watch a game. There you go. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to get them down here. I think they're going to love Fayetteville. Yeah, no doubt about it. No, you mentioned uh, you like to spend some time at the lake. I remember last year when Musk took everybody out to the lake, were you mm-hmm. like showing guys the ropes on like what to do, how to tube, and, and all that stuff? Was that? I feel like most most guys kind of had a, <laughs> a sense of what was going on. Uh, Bay Fall was funny to, to be around. I think that was kind of <laughs> sure. his, his first type of lake experience. We had uh, guys on the jet ski. Bay on the jet ski was was a sight. I bet that was electric. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the the lake was one of my favorite memories. Uh, getting to do it with the team was super special. For I mean, sure. You, you kind of went viral with uh, with your shades on. You're like, I'm the teacher today, boys. Welcome to the SEC. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, did you know that, that John has that uh, that clip on the intro to his show that he does every day from four to six? He's yeah, got that on to, there. Yeah, we got to play it for no, so you. No, I, I forgot about that clip. I'll, yeah, I'll, you're, I'll have to see it. you're a, yeah, we'll show it to you after this. You're a, you're a celebrity around yeah, here, big man. Time, man. That's uh, funny. Yeah, I, I, that is a good clip. You know, work hard, play hard. So. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Absolutely. <laughs> that's right. I think I'm good, brother. Yeah, man, I'm good. We don't we don't want to keep you too long. We know you probably got some some studying or something to yeah, do. Yeah, we're man. Up, Sounds like you're a busy guy. Up, so exam, taking up a bulk of your free time that no, no, you really good, don't good. have. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm happy to be in here yeah. for sure. Well, man, we uh, we really appreciate you coming in, and and honestly, got a lot of respect for you, man, for because uh, sure. I know it's been a, a, a tricky time for you, and uh, I think everybody can tell who who will listen to this that you just kind of handled everything in stride and. Uh, approaching it the right way and in a mature way. So so good on you for that, man. We Thank appreciate you. it. I really appreciate that. All right, everybody. Well, special episode with Lawson Blake complete. We appreciate you guys for tuning in to Pot at the Palace. It's been Curtis Wilkerson, Scotty Bordelon, and we will catch you guys tomorrow.